Sonny, can you hear me? Can. Yes, I can, Matt. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, thank you very much for joining us on this Veterans <laughs> Day. I just kind of wanted to, as I mentioned before, uh, hoping you could give us some perspective on the NIL issue here. And I was mentioning that you started out as a doing high school tournaments in, in Pennsylvania, organizing that, served as a longtime shoe executive, a proponent through the, uh, the O'Bannon lawsuit. Um, and I got to ask, it, from the perspective of where you are now, uh, and, and originally being cast as this iconoclast and kind of nefarious figure in, in the uh, marketing world, do you feel vindicated um, in what you see today in terms of, of NIL licensing? And now it seems like everyone's come over to your side of the table, so to speak. How does it look from your perspective, from where you started this years ago to today, where now we're seeing pending federal and state legislation and everyone seems to be on board with compensating these athletes? Man, I don't feel vindicated. I never felt anything wrong. Everything I ever did in my life, I was an advocate for the underdog. You know, I can remember, you know, John Carlos and Tommy Smith and Peter Norman. I can remember Dick DiVenzio a long time ago when he went to Duke, a good friend of Jay's. I, I knew Eddie O'Bannon. You know, my life, you know, the, the problem with my life is my life in people's perspective, what they thought it was. Do I feel vindicated? No. Do I feel proud? Watching Eddie, Brand, Eddie O'Bannon five minutes ago in the show, you made me very proud. You know, it made me proud that we, we have people in this world who will stand up for what's right. We just caught up with what, what me and others thought of a long time ago. Don't be afraid of what's in front of you and question what people try to do with your life. So I feel good. I feel very good about Eddie O'Bannon. I feel very good about the girls who have taken that mantle. Now you go where you want with this show on name, image, and likeness, but don't ask Sonny to care about it because I can remember when I was scorned everywhere. But it was the funniest thing in the world. When I got into the business of being shoes and paying people, I paid college coaches who went to universities, all the greatest universities in the world, with these great, great coaches. A major company, a company that's the biggest company in this field in the world today. Interesting thought. No one ever stopped me from giving that check, my check, to these college coaches in 1977. Then Nike would give me my. Nobody ever stopped me going around and, 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 and going through the thing and signing 80 colleges, head coaches. No athletic director ever come to me. No NCAA person ever came to me or Nike and said we were offending somebody. It really started about 1996 or maybe 1988 when Nike signed Miami to an all-school deal, which they signed their rights over, Sam uh, Jankovic signed their rights over for their whole university for Nike to put everything on. It's interesting to me that all went by the NCAA and nothing ever happened until one day, one day out of nowhere, 1996, a friend of mine, Steve Greenberg and Brian Bodell, who I know, major players in, in media, major players in everything, you know, they, they signed a contract with ESPN and got $117 million for getting the names and the rights and the images of the college games that were played 50 years ago, 2,000 years ago, before man was born. If it was under the auspices of the NCAA, we'll let the NCAA run it. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I said to my wife, Pam, there's something wrong with this picture. This game was played 30 years ago. I wonder if anybody getting any money. It skipped my mind a little bit. I just, but then I remember Dick DiVincio telling me what he thought they would do. He said, Mr. Vaccaro, Sonny, he said, he played in my All-Star game in 1968. I knew him and his father. I didn't know him at Duke. I knew him in Ambridge, Pennsylvania. And he said, I'm going to give $5 to everybody. You want to put $5 in the envelope and let these kids take the $5 and let's see if they're amateurs. So we can progress. So now you can ask the second question, Matt. Vindicated? I don't feel vindicated. They never, I never had a name, image, and likeness deal because I wasn't good enough to get one. But sure. I know one thing. I had a scholarship for four years because someone gave me four years, and I got hurt, and I never played. That I remembered. But the NCAA, all this stuff, I saw the congressman on. He's a man of real and good intentions. I know that Senator Murphy's trying to do something that other people will try to do for years. Hell, we had something before the O'Bannon case. We had all kinds of cases. Stick on what you brought me about. Why the hell didn't they stop me when I gave 
all the coaches all those years. Heck, Nike had four teams in the Final Four in 1984. We owned it. No one said anything about anything. But then, then they snuck in that thing in the scholarship, these guys from the NCAA. And the kids signed the scholarship paper. And over here in page 2,819 of the scholarship, you're going to sign away in perpetuity your name, image, and likeness. And you people are still fighting? You're still arguing that they own these kids forever? The name, image, and likeness? That's what it is. God, my parents, gave me my name, image, and likeness. The answer to way didn't give me shit. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad to see that, that we have a, a, a person like you to kind of stand up for the, the athletes' rights in this, in this case. And going back into it, I think that um, more so even than an organizer or executive, you've kind of described yourself as an advocate uh, for the players in a lot of ways that, that we've seen them uh, perhaps taking advantage of in the past. What about for yourself? I mean, how what was it that, that led you down this path and how did you get into this advocacy role or what were the, some of the early things that you saw that made you kind of tipped you off to, to the, one, the money that was out here and then the injustices that you were witnessing in the athletic arena? You know, man, I can't explain myself. I, my, my life changes every five minutes. I've been 81 years. But on this particular subject, what changed me in a lot of ways in 1968 was the Olympics with John Carlos and Tommy Smith and, and Peter Norman, because I didn't know what the heck these kids were doing. I didn't even know Peter Norman up I didn't know what John and Tommy were doing, except they were fighting for something that I didn't understand. This is 68, because there's no YouTubes and all that. Then Dickie DiVenjo told me, but I'll tell you what really made me start thinking was Brandon Jennings was when they allowed college kids to go to pros and from Kevin, Kevin Garnett all the way up to 2005, when they opened the door between this liaison between the NCAA and the NBAA to let kids earn a living. So age would not have been a difference. That aggravated me. And that started me thinking of that. Yeah, then I run into name image and likeness after they, they do all these things. So my advocacy or my life, you know, basically just went along with every child of every parent or guardian who sent them to do and play in one of my tournaments. I, I was, my life has basically been a high school all-star game, a camp starting with Nike and a tournament run in Las Vegas. People don't understand this. At three months out of the year, I was really active. And I really knew everybody. The other nine months, I worked for somebody. And that's those somebody for the major shoe companies. What was my job? Basically, to sell shoes or help sell shoes. Who did I turn to? Colleges. Why did I do this, Matt? I did this because I told Phil Knight and Rob Strasser in 77 and 78, you want to sell your shoes? Give the damn things away. Put them on the college team. Put them on the high school team. Because I'll tell you who will sell the shoes. The kids that watch these games and play. So that's all I can say. This, this is not a hard question unless you have a problem with me. And the answer to ways had a problem with me. Right. Well, fair enough, too. But, um, well, maybe you could shed some light on that, too, to, it, it, from the marketing side of it. There's a ton of talented players out there, and, and you've worked with some of the all-time greats in terms of just talent and marketability, you know, from from uh, Jordan through Kobe Bryant to LeBron mm -hmm. James. Obviously, those are the, the superstars at the top end of it. But what is it that separates a talent to, to make it marketable to a, for a company to say, all right, we like this person here that's going to sell us shoes, whereas this person is perhaps of, you know, equal talent, just doesn't have that is it ability connect or or what is it that's that the, the transcendent thing between athletes that creates some marketing value that you've seen just in your interaction with, with various athletes over time? My answer I can and it will not work with everybody, I guess, is intuitively I had a feel because Michael Jordan, and we'll start with Michael, okay, and we'll start with all the myth of how Michael got there. But I do know one thing. I was asked a question. And they asked me to sign one guy. It was a person I never met personally at the time they asked me. It was a person whose college team did not 
wear Nike shoes. It was a person that didn't play in my all-star game. It was only a person that I watched beat one of my favorite teams of all time, Georgetown. So my intuitiveness stuck with me because he was not on my mind and he did not win the championship his last year. So let's put that on the table here. But go through to Kobe, go through to Tracy McGrady, go through to LeBron, because LeBron said the he set everything up. Michael started it. Kobe and Kevin and Tracy and those kids in the 90s continued it, and LeBron ended it, okay? LeBron set the thing because everyone knew. What was my role? What should be a role as a marketer? I had ideas. What the hell could the public grasp onto? Why do we like uh, Lady Gaga instead of Barbara Streisand? Right. I mean, two different things, two different, two different generations, two different generations. All right. But you like them because there's something there's something in a human being that transfers itself. That was my life. Finding that. And I also would say to this, the people here wondering if there's a magic formula. I know one thing on this name, image and likeness thing. Unfortunately, one of the I never met the kid. Uh, one of the greatest athletes I've ever seen is Zion Williamson. I had I only saw him because he went to Duke and he was on television. I know one thing that the the problem that exists still yet they don't know what Zion did or did not do while he was at Duke. That's a fact. They're still fighting in court on what he that should never have happened because he should have allowed to do that. What the hell did he do wrong if he did anything wrong? If he did, I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know. I never met Zion. My point to you is that shouldn't have happened. But I do know the point to you and the public, it happened in front of the world. And all of a sudden, the shoe explodes and the world is over. And all of a sudden, I know is that X company I did flew the best people who make shoes. I don't know how, how hard it is to make a shoe, but we went to China and got that shoe. And we brought the next effort back. There was extended effort to make sure, thank God, for Zion and thousands of other kids that he could play ball. So the next time somebody tells me, well, he's playing it for a good old uh, bah, 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 college, that's full of crap because the Zions and the LeBrons and the Kobe's aren't the same old people. And the young guy that won the championship last year for LSU isn't the same guy. And the guy that took the place of Tao who got hurt the great quarterback who got hurt when they're winning 55 to nothing. You guys give me that answer instead of asking me that question. What the hell right do these guys in college or somewhere else say, you can't do it? The NCAA, the ones that took my name, image, and likeness away from me, I'm tired of this nonsense and beat me up again. And this will make a headline for your show because I'm telling you what I've been telling you. And, and it's nothing to do with me. It's nothing to do, it's to do with those kids. Eddie O'Bannon stood up and he was counted. I went, I knew all the kids in that class. I knew Eddie personally because his mom and dad and, and Charles, his brother, because I coached and he played in my games. But thousand kids played in my games. I didn't get a thousand kids, but Eddie stood up. And Eddie was the least of the names at that time. Although in the introduction to Eddie today, and the man took care of him well, he was a he was the best college player in the world. That's why EA Sports gave him no, didn't give him money. That's why EA mm -hmm. Sports didn't give him money. They didn't give money because they didn't have to. We'll give it to the NCAA. They were still making money off Ed O'Bannon. Go ahead, Matt. I know. No, no. I, people are here okay. to hear what you have to say, sir. Certainly not, not me. But I will ask, though, that we have seen uh, a couple of things pop up in the last couple of years, whether it's the NBA Developmental League, now the, the G League. Uh, we're seeing more younger players go overseas uh, to kind of uh, capture opportunities there. What about for the second level non-superstar talent? Do you see that it seems like the avenues there are growing for them to kind of monetize their ability and, and value? Do you think that's going to continue or what's the future here for outlets and potential for athletes to earn uh, maybe that aren't at the very top of the food chain? I honestly believe they'll be able to earn five pennies more than they got already. They're getting nothing now and they're still the same kids. They're going to have an opportunity to, to earn and make some money legitimately. 
they'll be on anything that you can do as a team they should all share when eddie shared all the money because of the game that we won in camp that michael hosfield and, and won in the o'bannon case basically everyone got the same amount except the, the lead plaintiffs you know matt those kids will share in something and then also those kids let's not go to the big five we we put the whole world on the big five well, what about the kid that goes to let's just use the university of delaware okay well, let's just do that because our president's now from delaware they'll they'll treat that kid well that goes there and plays basketball or football whatever they play there to some of the smaller schools well what about the historic and black colleges do you not think there's a there's a a marketplace for kids who go go back and play for the schools that we don't even remember who they are but i remember the gramblings of the world i remember when the greatest football basketball players in the world went to destroy black schools they weren't allowed into the nba and you're talking about coaches and you're talking about jobs it's going to be more because of name image and likeness for even the the people who are associated with it how about if we get a team thing now and and the student manager gets in there and his picture's in that paper well, on that poster in the wall, maybe he should get something too. I think those kids will make themselves a five dollar bill. Well, one I last thing. Yeah, I got to jump in. I, I love it. Well, no, I was going to just ask Mr. Vaccaro if uh, uh, do you have a preference? Is that's coming up big in the chat here between uh, Lady Gaga or Barbara Streisand? Uh, personally, well, hundred to one Streisand. on Streisand. Barbara Streisand, my, my granddaughter, told me about Lady Gaga, and I admire her. I didn't understand which, but I admire her, but Barbara Streisand. <laughs> Easy, easiest, bet, well. easiest bet ever. Sonny, thanks so much for joining Thank us, uh, bringing your passion, your insight, and your historical view. We do appreciate it. Matt, you can work on your second question, and maybe next time we'll get it in. <laughs> I will put that I'm in the water. I'm, I'm the next one. Thank you very I'm much. Thank you, Sonny.